your own body cells which find your body's environment so bad because you have, you have poisoned your mind and you hate everybody, the cancer grows. What cancer? Your own body cells which can't survive, they mutate. So you can't kill that cancer with chemicals. This great Nobel laureate biologist Albert Zane Georgi wrote a book called Introduction to Submolecular Biology and Albert says, I don't know what cancer is. Who is saying that? A Nobel laureate biologist. I don't know what cancer is because cancer cells work exactly like normal cells. And I don't know how a human being can kill a cancer cell without killing the normal cell. Cancer cells may look different under the microscope because they are not the cells, they are the tombstones of the cells. What do you do? You take a biopsy, crush it on the cell and stain it with chemicals, kill it and what you see there is the tombstone of the cell. It might look distorted but function is the same. Double Nobel laureate Linus Pauling said, whole cancer industry is a fraud. Who said that? Linus Pauling. If I had said they would have killed me, they couldn't kill Linus Pauling because he was 94 already. <laughs> and then, you know, he had two Nobel Prizes and had a lot of money with him, so no, nobody could touch him. He said even cancer charities are a fraud. Nobel laureate saying this. So what does it mean? We have not understood that. You know, they called me to inaugurate an international cancer conference in Starter Cancer Hospital last year. I said, why call me? I'm not a cancer specialist. And why do you call me? I don't want to play to the gallery. Sir, we are calling you because we have read your articles on cancer. You want us to come. I thought they want to kill me or hit me or something. Because it's a big conference, 1,500 delegates, 500 from abroad. And all the big people were there. So I went there, very nervous. It was held in the Taj Palace Hotel. They had given me a room also in Taj Palace Hotel. So they said, sir, you will inaugurate and you will give the keynote address. Nobody is there. You go, start talking. One hour. So I talked, whatever I wanted, whatever I am telling you now, I am said it in a big, bigger way. They gave a standing ovation. I was surprised. Then they gave a nice lunch. I was still surprised. <laughs> then after lunch, the director of Tata Cancer and the president of the American Cancer Society came to my room. I thought probably they'll kill me alone in the room. <laughs> they said, sir, what you said is absolutely right. You were considerate. You said 85% of cancer research is fraud. No, sir, 100% of cancer research is fraud. <laughs> we know that, and but we can't tell that. That's why we called you. We know you will tell the truth, and I wanted the truth to go. So next year, we are having a WHO-sponsored Contrarian Views on Cancer Conference in Paris. Would you come and give a keynote address? I said, certainly. You know, I'll, so I hope they'll call me. Now, what has happened? I, in the speech I sold, Tata Cancer, why do you want to make money? Start a palliative unit here. Tell the patient when they come, look, you, this won't help you. You are in a terminal stage. I'll give you some tender, loving care. Let's see what happens. They started that. In Tata Cancer, today you have a palliative unit. They called me after three months to inaugurate the unit and four consultants left their job and joined here as consultants. All that they do is what this little girl is doing, giving TLC, tender loving care. What kills in cancer? Two things. A, fear. B, cachexia. Cancer patients can't eat. Fear. And if you don't eat, you die. Cancer cachexia is the worst killer. And if you give them food, if you give them tender loving care, you are fine. And that is what this girl is doing. And I think you are doing a great work, Sujita. Continue to do that. People might think, oh, what this girl, she has not gone to the medical school. Advantage that you have not gone to the medical school. Because if you go to the medical school, you are a convert. Then you can't be converted. Converting a convert is more difficult than converting a non-convert. So all that you have to give is love. If you have love, give it in abundance. I'll tell you something very interesting happened. Christie's Hospital in Manchester is the oldest cancer hospital, which has records from 1841. So some researcher recently did one cancer, chronic myeloid leukemia, study of two slots, 40 years, 1900, 1940, 1950, 1990. 1900, 1940, we had only TLC. 1990, 1950, 1990, we had Boosalfam, this, that, operation, blah, 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 blah. The per capita death of people who came walking to the hospital and went horizontal to the crematorium, was slightly higher in the second half than in the first half. Do you know why, scientifically? The mother cell, which produces cancer cells, which is called a pluripotent stem cell, does not deliver 
children every day as you calculate your dosage of the medicine. One day it may deliver 3 million children and that time you give busulfan, the children are killed, cancer patient feels better. Next one month the mother might sleep, you give every day busulfan, so you kill the mother also. So we have harmed more patients than we have helped. But this study is not read by many doctors for the simple reason it is not highlighted by the industry. You know when doctors, practicing doctors get to know about studies, when it is printed by the drug company in a very nice uh, printed matter and brought to your office and said, Doctor, this study, BMAG did this study which said, if you don't give insulin to everybody, they will all die. Every doctor knows that. Because it is not publicity. The real good studies are no publicity at all. Do you know there is a big study which happened in four universities, London, Cambridge, Oxford, Hamburg. What did they study? What role do drugs play? They did an interesting study. They took severe pain and gave a drip of morphia. Can you believe that? Morphia is a very pain killer. They took it. 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 No pain relief. Then they took the same patient, what we call as a crossover study, a statistician knows. And then they ran a drip of saline, salt water. And the doctor said, Ye to morphia hai. Ye morphia ka ka naya salt hai. Apna pain, aise jayega. Aise gaya pain. <laughs> then the researchers were shocked. This study was conducted from Oxford University. And the chief author of the study was Professor Bingel, who is a professor of medicine in Oxford. They were shocked, what is this? So they said, okay, let us find out what the brain is doing in the meantime. So they did an fMRI, functional MRI. It tells you what's the brain doing. And repeated the study. When the patient was told it was not morphia, when in fact it was morphia, and the patient believed, mark my words, when the patient believed it is not morphia. Oh, Marish jo hai, oh, morphia nahi bolke, oh, believed kar diya to, his brain sleeps, nothing happens. And the pain doesn't go. When you give salt water and say it is morphia and the patient believes it is morphia, you will be surprised. When the patient believes it is morphia, the forebrain produces so much of opioids which are more powerful than morphia and the pain goes. So who, who cured the pain? Your own forebrain. You cured the brain. And what was the doctor's role? You believed the doctor.